What is up you guys, it's your boy Rootless Dillas and today we are going to be starting something new on the Rootless Dillas channel. Now I'm not saying this is permanent, uh, I'm just saying uh, I'm going to try this and see how you guys like it and go from there. Um, today, for the first time ever, we are going to be doing a Dragon Ball Super uh, episode review and this is going to be reviewing episode 123. Um, so yeah, oh, we started off this episode uh, with the ending of last episodes where as Vegeta fired a Gallic gun and um, was it the Gallic gun or the final flash? No, the final flash didn't work. It was the it was the Gallic gun that he fired and um, and uh, Jiren just threw just like knocked it away and uh, he came up super fast and he blasted Vegeta in the chest uh, and that's how we led into this episode with uh, Jiren, with Jiren uh, had just pummeled Vegeta. Uh, Goku was losing his mind because he was like, it, it was such a heartfelt moment. Like to be honest with you, the only, the only other time I had seen Goku like that was uh, with Vegeta. At least was on Namek whenever um, Frieza killed um, Frieza killed uh, Vegeta. When Free yeah, when Frieza killed Vegeta. That was uh, his heartfelt moment with him, uh, but other than that, uh, after that, uh, Goku just goes into SS Blue. Um, he he charges up his power real quick, uh, and so does Jiren. And both of them do it to the point where their key just explodes to like this explosion, which uh, Vegeta tends to call a stupid stunt. Um, after that, they start fighting. Uh, but then I noticed something different in Goku. I noticed like a strategy, uh, like a strategy um, side in Goku because Goku, what he does is he gets like these like mm, this little key dust. Follow me here, uh, and he's dropping it everywhere he's getting close to Jiren, and um, he's draw he's dropping it everywhere close to there. Uh, so um, and Jiren doesn't notice anything. Jiren's just like, uh, whatever, dude. You know, whatever. Um, and then, um, uh, then they go into like this, um, they, they go into like this scene wherever, um, Goku's, uh, throwing Kienzons, he's throwing Destructo Discs as they call it in the dub, uh, but he's throwing Kienzons and, um, they don't seem to be working on Jiren because they just shatter, uh, they just shatter when they touch him and he actually caught one and threw it back at Goku, um, but, uh, it cuts, it, one of the destructo discs, uh, uh, ends up cutting a ledge to where, um, Goku and Jiren are fighting a ledge, and then all of a sudden the weird thing happens. Right when Goku is about to fall out, um, the, the destructo disc that, it was either the destructo disc that Jiren threw back, or one that Jiren didn't see, because if you remember well, during, um, earlier in, earlier in the, Earlier in the series, whenever um, Krillin and um, v Krillin and Goku were training for this for this exact tournament, um, the mm, Krillin did a destructo disc move on him to where he saw all of them except one that cut a hole under him. But this one was different because it cut the part of the ledge that was behind Jiren and ended up making him fall to where the point where we saw where we thought we we had saw Jiren fall you know out of the arena because after that Goku used instant transmission to get above him and kick him uh, to think but it was too good to be true because he used the same it was so weird because he used the same rocks that were falling with him to propel himself to go up so he jumped he jumped on the on the rocks that were falling and he came back up and he ran through all like the key mine landmines you know that he that Goku planted in the beginning of the episode and then comes the comes the best part and like like out of if i had to you if i had to choose um the top moment for working together for Goku and Vegeta working together this would be it because all right so Goku and Jiren are still fighting and then Jiren Jiren's fist blows up. Jiren's fist glowed up a lot in this fight. I didn't see it in the first Goku Jiren fight, but except when he blasted uh, Goku away. But 
Other than that, I've never seen Jiren's fist glow up a lot like that. So his fist was glowing up, and then all of a sudden he was about to punch Goku. Uh, when he did, it ripped through the entire like it ripped through like three um, mountain range. Well, it was, uh, the arena practically looks like a mountain range now, but it ripped through all that, pulverized the whole thing, and Goku was shocked. He couldn't believe it. And then he tells, then he tells Jiren, I get how strong you are. He doesn't say it like that, but uh, my version of understanding it is, uh, he said, I get how strong you are, but that doesn't mean I'm going to give up. And then Vegeta, all of a sudden, like we thought Vegeta was like, you know, like knocked out. But then all of a sudden we hear Vegeta say, and I, uh, basically what he said was, I won't either. And he, he got up, um... Goku fired up into SS Blue Kaioken, his full power at the mo well, I mean Ultra Instinct is his full power. I so wish we could have saw Ultra Instinct in this episode. It was a kind of it was kind of a bummer that we didn't, but uh, you know, Super does what Super does. Um, he fired up into SS Blue Kaioken, um, and Vegeta was it was aw the transformation was just awesome. I mean, it wasn't as awesome as Ultra Instinct when Goku transformed, but, I mean, it was cool, because it showed, like, a moment, it showed the moment in the, in the tournament, where Vegeta was talking to Kaba, and he promised him, uh, no, he, uh, he told Kaba, you got to win, because you promised to take me to planet Sadala, and, um, Kaba tells him, one of our universes will be erased, so that promise can never be kept, but uh, Vegeta fires back at him and tells him, "Well, if I win, I'm gonna resurrect you guys with the with the Super Dragon Balls." And um, he was so cool how he's thinking about that moment because then he's like, "I have to keep my promise to him." And that's like the top, the top Vegeta moment that I've I've never seen Vegeta like care about, even for his own son Trunks. You know, he had never like. The only fake time he cared for Trunks was whenever, you know, he knocked Trunks out. Which I mean, yeah, he didn't want his son to die. So I mean, it was, it was a little, it was a little bit caring, but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, uh, Vegeta's hair turns. Um, it's still blue, but it's like this darker blue, and his eyes seem like a little bit more clear, almost human-like. Like his eyes look blue, like a human's, and um, he, not not the color, not by the color, but just by how they look. They just look clear, and um, his hair turns. You know, his aura gets dark. We see like an explosion of dark blue aura, um, and yeah, we have Vegeta's new transformation. People are calling it uh, Super Saiyan Blue Two. People are calling Ultra Super Saiyan Blue, um, but. Uh, I heard somebody, I heard somebody say this the other day, I think it was Geek the 101, um, how, uh, whenever, um, Vegeta was fighting Cell, he had, like, this transformation where he was still Super Saiyan, but he was more buffer, if you, if you remember, if you remember that from the Cell Saga, um, and, uh, that was Super Saiyan Grey 2, and, to be honest, this could be Super Saiyan Blue Grey 2, um, but it was one of the first times that uh, Vegeta had his own exclusive transformation. Like, I like how Vegeta's got this new transformation and Goku's got Ultra Instinct. Now, if they fuse together, who knows what could happen? You know, what would the, what would Vegito's top transformation be? You know. But other than that, uh, yeah, I just don't really. I, I don't know how any anything else that I missed there. Um, we saw the seventeen and the seventeen Gohan and Topo fight. We saw the Frieza and Dispo fight. Uh, the Frieza and Dispo fight gives me good vibes. I want to see that all the way. I want to see Frieza because in in the spoilers, well I probably shouldn't say it because you don't want to be spoiled, but um, I'm gonna say it anyway. Uh, Frieza is gonna try to try to. Um, add himself to Universe 11, and he's going to be like, he, he basically tells Dispo, look, if you guys, um, if, if you guys, um, resurrect me whenever, whenever you guys win, um, 
I promise to backstab you. I promise to backstab Universe Seven, and just go just go with you guys. And so basically, uh, I want to see him do that. I want to see him succeed, but I want to see him uh, after he succeeds, like he did with Frost. You know, I want to see that happen. Other than that, there's nothing really else that I missed. I hope you guys like this episode review. I know it was kind of it was kind of um weird, but you know, I don't have any notes written here, so. It was just on the fly. Uh, if you guys could do me a huge favor, leave this video a like. Comment if you liked it. Comment what I missed. Because I'm sure I missed a lot. And there, if there's someone like Geek the 101 who watches this out there, bro, like feel free to roast my ass, you know? Um, anyway, uh, in the top left corner of the screen, on the you're going to be seeing my icon. And feel free to cl click that and subscribe. It would help me a lot. And on the right hand of the screen, you're going to be seeing uh, my latest two videos. And yeah, thank you for watching.